there's one rule when it comes to strength ratio that it, it, I found to be pretty accurate. The stronger you are eccentrically versus your concentric strength, the lower is your risk of injury, your potential of injury. Uh, because the stronger you are eccentrically, the better you are at absorbing and controlling force. Now, the problem is with modern strength training is that a lot of athletes and strength coaches alike focus so much on lifting strength, lifting performance, that you have athletes with a concentric strength that is way too high for their eccentric strength. Normally, eccentric strength should be 120, 140, even 200 in some athletes, but let's say ideally 140% of your concentric strength. Uh, and you have athletes, because they overemphasize concentric strength, they have a ratio of 110 to 100 when it comes to eccentric. And that increases the risk of injury tremendously. So the first benefit of including eccentric training in your workouts, either by utilizing weight releasers, using slow eccentrics, or the 2-1 technique, to allow you to emphasize the eccentric action, well, is that you will increase that strength ratio, decreasing the potential uh, of, of injury. But there are other benefits to being strong eccentrically when it comes to an athlete. First of all, the stronger you are eccentrically, the better you will be at absorbing force. Let's say I'm sprinting or changing direction. Here's what happens. When I'm trying to change direction, I will step, absorb, stop, project. And that absorption, when my foot hit the floor and I'm absorbing my body weight, is eccentric strength. The stronger I am eccentrically, the less of an absorption force or absorption period I need. If I'm weak eccentrically, I need a long absorption phase. That long absorption phase makes me slower because it takes me a lot more time to change direction. If I'm strong eccentrically, that absorption phase is much shorter so I can change direction much more easily and rapidly, which will make me faster when I sprint and also more, more agile when I'm changing direction. And of course, when you're getting hit, then your capacity to absorb force is really important. By the way, on a tangent, because that's something I do, one of the main benefits of the Olympic lift, specifically the power clean, is not increasing power projection. One of the main benefits for athletes of a power clean is learning to absorb force. I'm cleaning, boom, and I'm catching the weight in that athletic position. I'm teaching my body to absorb that 200, 300 pound weight and boom, and not crash under it. So as an athlete, it makes me a lot better at absorbing force. That's why when you're working with an athlete and you do power cleans, you don't accept someone who will catch a power clean like that. You always catch a power clean in the athletic position to have sport transfer. But let's get back to our topic, the, the role of eccentric strength in, in athletic. So it reduces the risk of injury by increasing the eccentric to concentric ratio. It makes you better at absorbing force, so you're faster during your change of direction, faster when you're sprinting. And, and it also constitutes a great way to increase the size, the thickness of the tendons. Eccentric training has been shown to increase hypertrophy of the tendons, as well as the section of the muscle closest to the tendon, distal hypertrophy. And making those regions stronger and bigger will improve your capacity to absorb potential energy and use it to produce force, concentric force. So being, including eccentric work in your training over time will increase your potential to be strong and powerful. It might not do it Instantly, it might not be as good as doing plyometric work or doing faster eccentric, but it, by building the tendons up, it makes you better in the future at being explosive. Another benefit is the thicker the tendons, the less protective your Golgi tendon organs will be. The GTOs, Golgi tendon organs, are, are structures in your tendons that sense when your body is producing force. 
And when it senses that you're producing too much force, it will inhibit force production so you don't tear yourself apart. But this mechanism is super conservative. That's why a non-trained individual can utilize maybe 30% of their strength potential. And the more they're training, the more they are inhibiting it so that they can use a greater percentage of their potential. But by increasing the size and thickness of the tendon, those GTOs will not kick in as easily, allowing you to use a greater percentage of your force protection, uh, your force production potential. And it's easy to understand. The reason why that protective mechanism kicks in is to protect you against yourself so that you don't tear yourself apart. But if the tendons are thicker, your brain knows that the chance of tearing yourself apart is much lower, so the, it allows you to use more of your potential. So that's another way it will increase athletic potential, by making you capable of utilizing a greater percentage of your force potential. That's why you have those Olympic weightlifters who oftentimes don't even look like they're lifting, but they can clean and jerk 450, 500 pounds because they can use 90% of their force potential because those GTOs don't kick in as easily. And eccentric action can add that benefit by making those tendons thicker. So eccentric is important to reduce the risk of injury by improving their eccentric to concentric ratio. It makes you better at absorbing force, so faster at changing direction. It also makes those tendons thicker, which allows you to store more potential energy that you can use during the concentric projection. And also by making those tendons thicker, you decrease the sensitivity of the protective mechanisms, allowing you to use a greater percentage of your potential. Basically, without even adding more muscle, you will be stronger simply because you can use more of the strength you already have. So that's why when you're designing a program for athletes, it's important to emphasize both concentric, isometric, and eccentric if you want maximum sporting performance.